This week on Ninja Lab, my stick got twice as long, and we'll be going over the results of Brooklyn Zoo Warrior Factory Buffalo, Kinetic Ninja Warrior, Movement Lab Ninja Training Grounds, Obstacle Warrior Kids, Midwest Twisters, and Ninja Quest, starting with Kinetic Ninja Warrior. My name is William, let's get things started. For the adult female division, in third place was Sarah Isert. Sarah was looking pretty good early on getting through the giant ring swing and the amazing looking one ton human hamster wheel but unfortunately the sixth obstacle the skateboard discs she was unable to maintain her balance and was eliminated on that portion of the course she completed the hamster wheel in one minute and 12.54 seconds sure. Oh, Dad, good try. All right, Sarah! Getting through the hamster wheel was key for the women. In second place was Jennifer Alvarez. She was on a drum roll early on, but unfortunately for her, she also was unable to get past the skateboard discs. And while transferring to the second one, her back heel landed on the floor, which is out of bounds, resulting in her run stopping there. She made it through the hamster wheel in 1 minute and 8.83 seconds. Fabulous. You can step, step as long as you balance over the center of the next one. Oh, good try. And in first place was Aurora Rockman. Aurora was the final adult woman to take on the course, and she was able to take on the dare of becoming first place and successfully complete it by reaching the sixth obstacle in a time of 1 minute and 6.46 seconds. Unfortunately, just like all the adult women before her, she was unable to complete the skateboard discs and lost her balance on that obstacle. But her performance still allowed her to finish in first place, and all three women in the top three of this qualifier qualified for the World Championship in February, which is this month. Holy cow! For the adult male division, in third place was Paul Fisher. Paul was able to take on the physical challenge and complete the skateboard discs while carefully making his way through that obstacle. Then he was able to climb the spiderweb climb and even get through the cannonball run. Unfortunately, when he took on the hanging cliffhangers, it was almost as if they were covered in slime and he slipped off and was unable to complete the course. You got it. Excellent. Keep working it. Nice. Yes. All right. In second place was Black Jewels, Julius Ferguson. Julius unfortunately took a lot of time on those skateboard discs that tripped up a lot of people. But fortunately for him, he knew that time was tight on this slopsicle course, and he rushed through the entirety of the course, both before and after the discs which allowed him to finish the entire course in a time of 2 minutes and 48.59 seconds. Julius looked very impressive overall. And in first place was Brandon McWilliams. Ultimately, the skateboard discs is what made the biggest difference as he was able to complete that obstacle faster than Julius. And with the benefit of being the final competitor of the entire night, Brandon was able to complete the entire course and do so in a time of 2 minutes and 39.11 seconds, making him the fastest finisher and winning him a trip to space camp. No, I'm just kidding. He actually gets 10 more points on his total for the World Championship, which is this month! The National Ninja League Season 5 World Championship will be coming soon. In fact, it starts February 21st through February 23rd. If you want to see it in person, get your tickets now because Spectator Sick tickets are selling out quickly. You can find all the information on NationalNinja.com. And if you would like to buy some merch, check out the link down below. You can get yourself a hat or a shirt. Now let's check out the results for Warrior Factory Buffalo.
Unfortunately, we only have footage of one of the top three women for Warrior Factory, but I can tell you that in third place was Olivia Sinatra. Olivia qualified for the World Championship by completing the spinny tilty, but unfortunately being eliminated by the floating monkey bar. And in second place, as you can see on your screen right now, was Liz Gross. She was able to use grit and determination to make it through obstacles like the balance tank and a tricky looking balance pole obstacle, as well as a floating monkey bar and this nasty lake eerie sink or swim, which is just requires you to use your whole body uh, arms to swing across. Unfortunately, she was unable to complete the unstable bridge afterwards and was eliminated at that point and she took second place only to jennifer stefano who also was eliminated by the unstable bridge but she reached there almost a full minute faster than liz did netting her first place and 10 points towards her total Warrior Factory had a very tough course. For the adult male division, in third place was Danny Adair. Danny qualified for the World Championship by making it deep in the 17 obstacle course. He was able to mount the balance tank after uh, almost missing it and was able to get through the tilting bridge no problem. However, when he reached the tackle balls, he was unable to make the transfer to the rope and his grip gave out causing him to fall at the very end of the obstacle. However, a impressive performance nonetheless. In second place was Giovanni Hernandez. Giovanni was able to do a skip at the tilting ladders and was overall able to run at a faster pace than Danny did, which is a good thing too, because he reached the tackle balls approximately 25 seconds faster than Danny. And unlike Danny, he was unable to grab onto the first ball. So even though he did slightly worse on the obstacle, he was able to reach the obstacle faster, allowing him to take second place. And in first place was Ryan Sanders. Ryan was able to complete the tackle ball obstacle, unlike anyone else in the entire competition, and then was able to beat a few more obstacles, including a downhill jump and the warp wall to finish things off, making him the only finisher of the qualifier, netting him first place and 10 points towards his season total. Ryan simply looked calm and cool on the entire course, with no mistakes seemingly made. It's now time for the comment question of the week. So, in the comments below, I want you to tell me how many hours a week do you spend training ninja? Let me know. I like to hear from all y'all. Now, let's go over some fast forward results of qualifiers that we don't have footage for. For Brooklyn Zoo, for the adult female division, in third place was Caitlin Briganti, who um, made it uh, two obstacles in. In uh, second place was Anna Watts, who also made two obstacles in, but finished eight seconds faster. This allowed her to qualify for the World Championship. And in first place was Becky Schwartzman, who made it further than any other woman and qualifies for the World Championship in February. 
for the adult male division. In third place was Matt D'Amico, who finished the whole course in a time of 1 minute and 30.13 seconds. In second place was Ryan Scott, who finished with a time of 1 minute and 27.67 seconds. And in first place was Judas Licadario, who scores another victory by finishing in first place with a time of 1 minute and 22.07 seconds. For Ninja Quest, for the adult female division, in third place was Juma Goldberg, who completed the hang glider in a minute 44.11. In second place was Christina Gambino, who also completed the hang glider, but faster, in a time of 1 minute and 22.26 seconds, which qualifies her for the World Championship. And in first place is the always impressive Rachel Brown, who completed put a ring on it a few obstacles further than any other woman, and allows her to score 10 more points for the adult male division. In first place was Jordan Hatton, who finished the whole course at a time of 3 minutes and 44.52 seconds, which qualifies him for the World Championship. In second place was Rowan Roman, who finished in 3 minutes and 9.4 seconds. And in first place was Matthew Hall, who finished the whole course in 3 minutes and 6.67 seconds. For Obstacle Warrior Kids, the adult female division in first place was Alicia Penroy who automatically qualified because unfortunately she was the only one who competed uh, but meant far enough to have a qualifying run. Uh, for the adult male division in third place was Daniel Wentworth who completed handstand crawl and qualified for the national finals. In second place was Abel Gonzalez who was able to finish the whole course in a time of 4 minutes and 21.82 seconds and in first place was Carson Voiles, who qualifies for the World Championship by finishing with a time of 4 minutes and 8.97 seconds. Now let's finish up this episode by watching the results of Movement Lab Ninja Training Grounds. That's the California one. For the adult female division, in third place was Tiana Weberly. Tiana was able to show once again why she was one of the best ranked females in all of Ninja, but unfortunately in an uncharacteristic move, when she took on the spinning log, she just simply misstep, took the log off course, and was taken out by that obstacle. Which is a shame, because based on her pace, she could have very easily taken first place had she completed that obstacle. In second place is Sarah Chang. Sarah moved through the course at a much slower pace than Tiana did, operating in a much more methodical strategy, allowing her to take a rest in between each obstacle. However, the key difference is that unlike Tiana, she was able to get through those spitting logs that tripped Tiana up, allowing her to finish in second place. Unfortunately, when she was at the pole grasper hang climber uh, combination, she was unable to make the transition, and that is where she fell on the course. And in first place is Becca Margiles. Becca was able to get through the spitting logs faster than Shara, approximately 90 seconds faster. But furthermore, she was able to make it a little further through the hang climb. Unfortunately, she was unable to maintain her grip and she was eliminated at that obstacle. Both Becca and Sarah qualify for the World Championship, which is very soon. For the adult male division, it was a race to the UFO. Dom Torres was able to reach the UFO in a time of 2 minutes and 50.96 seconds, which qualifies for the World Championship. After getting through the hang climber, he had to get through some canes, some flywheels, and the salmon ladder in not that particular order. But he still did a good job. In second place was the impressive Darren Perez. 
Even though Darren got a little hung up with the hang climbing, he was able to make up a lot of time on both the canes and the salmon ladder, getting through the obstacles very quickly. He was even able to successfully grab the UFO. Unfortunately, when transferring from the UFO to the second flying squirrel, he couldn't make the lache and fell on the course at that point. And in first place was Michael Chow. Michael ran about 75% through the run order, so he probably knew that he would have had to reach the Flying Squirrel UFO combination obstacle quickly, and that he did. Even though he never actually touched any of the Flying Squirrels, he did reach the end point of the flywheel, which was considered the checkpoint for that course. As a result, he reached it about 25 seconds faster than Darren, allowing him to finish in first place and earn 10 points towards his total. Hey everyone, if you want to see full runs from this week's qualifiers, go check out this playlist right here. And if you want to subscribe to know when new videos go live, hit this button right here. I'll see you all next time. Love y'all.